Welcome back. This is still TV3 New Day. And like I said earlier, uh, yesterday, uh, President Kufuado addressed all of us. Uh, that was his fifth address to the nation. And we just want to get a bit more clarity with what he said uh, yesterday. And we've been joined by the Information Minister Kuju Oponkoma. Good morning. Good morning, Atona. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Belated happy birthday to you. Uh, yesterday was your birthday. Thank you. All right, so just by way uh, of clarity, uh, yesterday, President Kufado told us that we are going to be starting mass production of some masks uh, domestically, and that's starting tomorrow. Is that the case? That is the case. Uh, in the last week, uh, the president, working with the ministers uh, for health, for trade, and for environment, science, and technology, um, has engaged a number of local producers uh, who are being contracted from this week to augment the supplies of uh, PPEs. Some of them have uh, even produced samples and have uh, demonstrated uh, the use of those samples. So they are being engaged from this week to augment uh, the supply of uh, PPEs by producing a lot locally mm -hmm. uh, so that we can ensure that uh, across the length mm. of Mm -hmm. frontline um, health workers. Yeah, so, but I didn't get that the, the companies are going to be uh, contracted to, to, to do this. Do we know how many companies locally? Yes. Um, if my memory serves me right, there were at least about two companies that have been initially engaged. Mm -hmm. One uh, happens to be in the free zone sampling here um, in Accra. Uh, they have already been able to submit uh, samples and show their quantities that they can produce within a very short uh, a piece of time. You know that when it comes to PPEs, there are various categories of PPEs. Mm -hmm. There are people who just need gloves and um, the nose mask. There are people who may even need the kind of helmet with the glass uh, frontage or cover, etc. So for the various categories of PPEs, mm -hmm. um, they have engaged, at least as I know, it's about two companies who have already provided samples and quantities of what they can produce. And we're looking forward to them starting production this week to augment what is already uh, being put in the system. Now, yesterday he spoke about some PPEs that are going to be distributed. Do we know whether they are already in the system or we are now trying to get them into the system? Indeed, um, his comments were to the effect that they have already been made available in the system. Uh, because it is also important to account for what has been put in the system, even while we acknowledge that sometimes at the lower level, the horizontal or the lateral distribution is not necessarily equitable. Mm -hmm. We have received reports of instances where um, PPE is made available to a particular district or a region or to a particular hospital, mm -hmm. yet the distribution at the lower level is not necessarily equitable. Mm -hmm. So while we are pushing to ensure some more equity in distribution, and while we are calling for feedback from persons who um, have feedback for us on PPEs, you can call us back through the hotline 311, which has mm -hmm. now been made available. Um, he's also now dealing with the local producers to get a bit more out there. Mm -hmm. The combined effect will help us to uh, get to a certain more appreciable level of PPEs across American facilities. At this time, when globally, the world of our people are uh, in need of supply, which is short. So these PPEs are already in the system. Now, you spoke about equitable distribution of PPEs. Now, last week, we heard that at the Wejagbawe municipality, uh, the, the, the health workers there were agitating that they didn't have, you know, all these PPEs, and so they are unable to attend to cases. We also heard about the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. How are we ensuring equitable distribution of these PPEs? As I've mentioned, it's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. One is to put the PPEs out there and let the world know that this is the quantum that we have put out there. Okay. And okay. also keep getting the message down to the directors at the lower level that, listen, ensure that distribution is equitable. Mm -hmm. If you have PPEs, you can't keep them just in the ICU and leave OPD or emergency naked. Mm -hmm. In fact, some doctors say that the safest place to be at this point in time is the ICU because you know the status of the patient you are going to take care of. And so you are protected. The risky places are OPD and our emergency, where you don't know the status of the one who is uh, coming in. So we continue to uh, supply and encourage uh, those who are managing the stocks at regional district and mm -hmm. uh, institution levels to ensure that distribution is equitable. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we continue to ask for feedback. If you still have challenges, give us feedback and let's feed it into those who are doing the distribution so that they know that, yes, you say you have taken one to uh, this particular district, mm -hmm. But this particular facility there says that they still don't have it. Check right. it out. 
In one instance, when we found out, it was about transportation from, um, I think, the regional level. They were using about one vehicle or so to move it from the regional level to a number of hospitals, and mm -hmm. uh, they were having clogs in transportation. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of this push and pull that mm -hmm. allows you to understand what is going on and then right. give it some more pressure. Now, we'll talk shortly about uh, interventions for health workers, but we are told that there are over 15,000 uh, uh, samples that we are left to receive. Are they all coming in at the same time? Um, so the 15,000 samples, my understanding is that they are now available. They have now been taken. Remember that the taken. teams responsible for the contact tracing, these are about 300 teams working in various parts of the country. They have contacted or they have traced about 19,000 people, but they've been able to take samples from about 15,000 people, which samples are now in queue to be processed through the PCR mm -hmm. uh, machines. We had to also give priority to those who were in mandatory quarantine to finish mm -hmm. off with this so that we can get as many of them uh, as possible out of the mandatory quarantine, considering that they were finishing their 14 days. Mm -hmm. But now, these 15,000 samples are now available, mm -hmm. and the idea is to run them through the PCR system. The president has asked them to work towards concluding this uh, by the end of this coming week so that the science and the data can help him make a decision on our next line of action. Now, uh, the, the frontline health workers, we heard from the president yesterday with a few interventions, you know, here and there. Are these interventions for uh, only government sector workers or the private uh, sector workers are, are included? My understanding is that it is not um, a differentiation between public and private health workers. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two categories of uh, interventions. Mm -hmm. There are interventions for general health workers. And then there are interventions for the frontline health workers. Okay. So for the general health workers, for example, the president says that uh, they will enjoy uh, 50. The general health workers will now have uh, a, a tax-free emolument regime for the right. next three months. For the next mm -hmm. three months, general health workers are not paying tax because we acknowledge that the industry is supporting us. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, for the frontline health workers, they are going to get a 50% increase of their basic salary in addition to the tax-free status mm -hmm. for this period that they are helping us out. Mm -hmm. And frontline health workers are very easy to um, identify because every case is known. Every one of our 214 cases is known. The persons who have been responsible mm -hmm. for taking the samples, processing the samples, the clinicians who are treating mm -hmm. them, those who are going home to visit those who are home, mm -hmm. every one of them is known. So they get a second category of benefits, um, which is this 50% increase in um, their basic salary um, in the next three months. Mm -hmm. And then there's a third level for those who are doing the contact tracing and drawing of samples. Mm -hmm. In addition to their tax-free status, in addition to their... Um, uh, they get 150 uh, CDs every day, we are told. They are mm -hmm. getting mm -hmm. 150 CDs allowance for every day that they are on the beat contact tracing and helping us to pick up these samples. So these are the categories. Mm. It's also providing transportation for um, health workers through the Ayalolo system. And this morning, my last conversation with the Minister for Transport, he's been coordinating between Greater Accra and Greater Kumasi to ensure that the execution uh, go smoothly, even though they may have some challenges in the early hours. So so let's talk about uh, the utilities. Yesterday, President Kufado mentioned that for three months, you're not going to be paying uh, uh, water bills and, and all that. Now, for people who do not have water flowing through their taps, they are, where they live, they don't even have the taps laid. Uh, and, and, and for those people who have to buy water you know, from the tankers, how are they covered? So, indeed, this question came up when the president was trying to arrive at that policy decision. And the Minister for Water, Resources and Sanitation was instructed to ensure that tankers are made available using the public uh, sector tankers that are available and commandeering a number of private sector tankers um, so that they will have a pool of tankers okay. that can also provide water into some of these communities that are described as vulnerable or communities where a pipe uh, bone water is not readily available. Mm. We want to encourage citizens to therefore um, utilize these um, Ghana Water Company Limited uh, tankers or commandeered tankers so that they benefit from this as well. Mm. And, and, and these uh, uh, commandeered tankers you're talking about are, are people you already know? The Ghana Water Company Limited has a database of private uh, sector tankers that they are going to work with uh, 
on this particular project. And that's a starting when? And that's a starting when? So that, for instance, if today I don't have water in my tank, what do I do? My understanding is that it's supposed to start as soon as possible. From mm. today, hopefully, it's supposed um, to start. No. Now, there have been calls, really, about you know, locking down some other regions, apart from those we've locked down now. What is the president looking at before he considers that? Um, you know, we've always said that the decisions that are being made are not emotional decisions. They are not decisions that are born out of uh, apprehension of public criticism or politics or anything. They are decisions that are driven by hard science and data. The president even alluded to that um, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Today, as we speak, the science and the data does not point to a total lockdown of the country or um, necessarily an extension today. That is why the president has mentioned that he, he needs to get results of two, two things primarily. One, the 15,000 samples that have been taken, mm -hmm. it will indicate to us whether or not we have significant community spread, which will inform his next decision. Mm -hmm. uh, B, though he didn't quite mention it, it's mm -hmm. part of his consideration. Mm -hmm. B, what is happening in the other 14 regions? Are you going to have a pop-up of cases in these other 14 regions in the 14-day period as a result of the suspicion of people exiting with the virus and transmitting it to other parts uh, of a country? Mm -hmm. So um, the surveillance teams uh, have a very good eye on this. Um, they show the president the maps every evening when uh, he sits to engage with the response team. Mm -hmm. And it is the combined effect of this data analysis that will determine the next line of action. Okay, and, and, point, and all cards remain on the table. And yesterday, I, I saw that he mentioned that they're, they're waiting for the 5,000 samples that we're waiting for. And that could also... The 15,000. You know, 15,000. And that could also inform, inform him. All right. So, so let's talk about... Uh, you know, some time ago, it was like three weeks ago, we were told that uh, we we're expecting some uh, test kits, uh, some 50,000 test kits. Do we know how many of that 50,000 is in the system as we speak? The last time I asked the Ghana Health Service Director General, I think it was on Friday, he told us that they've got a little over 40,000 in the mm -hmm. jurisdiction and they continue to receive um, some more. They have also had to amend or to improve or to add on to how they collect samples. It used to be the swabs only initially. Now they are also taking um, spittum, which they now can process and use for that uh, purpose. Uh, they are also working to recalibrate some of the other PCR machines in the Ghanaian jurisdiction to support what Noguchi and KCCR is able to do so mm -hmm. that they can process a lot more of the samples than they do uh, mm -hmm. currently. So the combined effect is what the president is looking forward to, uh, being able to process as many of these 15,000 um, over the next seven days or so, or at least a trend analysis that it comes in to inform his decision. You know that there are concerns about who is vulnerable. We are told that uh, the coronavirus alleviation program, has it taken effect? Has it taken off already, by the way? The coronavirus Akra alleviation program. Yesterday, as mm -hmm. the president mentioned, Kumasi is supposed to start today by providing some more feeding for the vulnerable, the homeless as well. So can you define who is vulnerable? Am I vulnerable? <laughs> um, the local government ministry mm -hmm. working with the Ministry of Social Protection already has a primary database of who they call the vulnerable. Mm -hmm. They have some parameters that they um, observe to determine who the vulnerable is. Uh, the challenge with that, in all honesty, is that in these 48 hours before the restrictions, people uh, moved out of some of these places. So that database may not be sacrosanct currently. Mm -hmm. What they are now doing is that through the local assembly, working as low as with unit committees. They are able to get a sense of who really needs some help and aggregate that at the local assembly level so that as these interventions are being made available, they can assist uh, those that uh, at the local level, they can clearly determine need some help. Okay, so as you speak, we don't have, you don't know, you can't tell us, you know, on top of your head, who these vulnerable people, because we've heard about the uh, persons living with disability, we've heard about Kayaye and Kayahis, uh, but I mean, that's just where it ends. The minister, you know, the minister, when she appeared before a press briefing, uh, made particular mention of the numbers of Kayaye they have, I think about 15,000 mm -hmm. persons with disability, I think that was about 2,000 that, um, uh, she mentioned. But we have been quick to say that, in all honesty, people have moved about a little bit. And so those data sets mm -hmm. may not in themselves be sacrosanct. Mm -hmm. That is why they are also allowing the local assembly level, working as low as down to the unit committee level, 
to also engage and give them some feedback so that they are able to um, take care of as many as they can without restricting it to simply say that if you are not on the KIA database or the mm. disability database, then mm. you are not included. Mm. Now, we are picking information that the Guinean uh, lady who escaped uh, has been found in Accra. I is that true? Last night, this question was uh, brought to my attention. I checked from the IGP and the security teams, the Joint Operations Command. In, indeed, earlier there was a reported uh, incident mm -hmm. that somebody had been picked up in the northern part of the country, suspected mm -hmm. to be uh, this Guinean lady. Mm -hmm. It turned out that uh, that was not um, the lady. She's not the we one. We've also mm -hmm. had reports that some platforms are suggesting that here in Accra, somebody was picked up on suspicion that uh, she's the person. I don't have any confirmation uh, of that from the security persons that I've spoken to. If indeed that happens, as we regularly provide information, we will uh, uh, do well to make that available. But the security persons have a clear idea of what her description is, mm -hmm. have put out the necessary alert and are on the lookout for her so that they can support her with the necessary treatment. Now, we are told that the reason why her picture is not all, all, all over the place on the internet is to avoid her being lynched. Is that the, is that the situation? You have to strike a balance in all the things that you do. Not mm -hmm. everybody has the kind of understanding that you may have um, about even the COVID-19 disease itself mm -hmm. and attendant issues. I'm sure you've seen videos of people who have some very wild theories about it or some very interesting theories about it. And we continue to work towards improving public education. But precisely because of that, you have to balance that um, with how much information you can put out there in the mm -hmm. public because you don't know what everybody will do with it. Absolutely. So they have weighed that balance and have the view that they will be able to uh, trace her and contain it. And we continue to trust their judgment even as we subject it to a lot of interrogation now, at this stage. Now, let me ask you, we have a very huge unemployment rate in the country. So I was hoping that when I was asking about the vulnerable in society, people who do not have jobs, how is government catering for them, you know, during this period? Well, I think the lens through which we are observing this is uh, the homeless, uh, the vulnerable and the poor. It's mm -hmm. not so much about employed or unemployed. Yeah, but that employed is vulnerable. <laughs> well, so agree? the lens through which we are looking at it, you mm -hmm. can look at it through various lenses. Okay. The lens through which we are looking at mm -hmm. is the poor, the homeless, um, the vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And we have said that at the local assembly level, at the unit committee level, that's the lowest level of breakdown in our society, about mm -hmm. 300, 400 mm -hmm. meters mm -hmm. Um, mm. of a unit committee, mm -hmm. they should be able to have clarity on who mm -hmm. is poor and vulnerable and homeless. Mm -hmm. Feed that to the assembly level so that the kind of interventions that are being made available, mm -hmm. if um, it's able to reach them, they are assisted accordingly. Mm. And, and so I still haven't gotten clarity on what your plan for the unemployed is. It's, it's not very clear to me. The plan is not for the unemployed. Employed. The okay. plan but what... is for the poor the homeless, the vulnerable. So we don't have a plan so, for the unemployed assistance? No, I haven't said we don't have a plan for okay. that. But I've said that the plan looks at it through the prism. You can have an employed person. Mm -hmm. I know people who are employed, whose employers have told them that, listen, the way the thing is going, we have to freeze um, even wages and salaries because we are not even getting customers because there's a lockdown. So technically, he's employed. But he's not even going to be getting... Um, allowances or payment because the mm. business. I know of a personal colleague who mm. uh, does some cooking business for a bank mm -hmm. and who because the bank has now rationalized numbers is not getting food orders. And as a result, the young men and women who do catering for him, who are system with catering, they are all home and don't necessarily, even though technically they are generally employed, they are not necessarily getting their weekly allowances as they were getting. Mm -hmm. If you look at it through the prism of unemployed and employed, these persons you would think are employed and therefore don't benefit. Mm -hmm. So we are not looking at it through employed or unemployed. We are looking at it from the point of view of the poor, the homeless, the vulnerable, mm -hmm. asking that the district assembly working through the unit committees is able to uh, give them some basic information so that they can feed that information to the top and extend uh, support to them. The poor, the vulnerable, and the homeless. Many thanks for your time this morning. Kojo Oponkoma is Information Minister. We hope that you come and share your cake with us, your birthday cake, what you cut yesterday. I'm waiting for your cake. <laughs>
we are grateful that you spoke to us this morning. Uh, and so he helped us to just understand exactly what uh, President Sekufado meant yesterday. Uh, uh, just a bit more clarity, yeah. you know, on that. I know you were concerned really, Bella, about how those who buy water from the tankers yeah. are going to survive. Yeah. Yeah. So you have your answers now. I do. Mm. I, what I just needed to cross check was, so do we call these people when we need the water or would they come to the communities mm -hmm. themselves? Mm -hmm. And so if you identify them, they tell them, they okay, okay, I need yeah. water. So yeah. I need to so understand we'll how get that, that clarity. Yeah, yeah. Maybe later mm -hmm. we'll get mm -hmm. that information. Mm -hmm. At least mm -hmm. let's see how they roll out the first Absolutely. Um, you know, few interventions and then we'll know what to do mm -hmm. ahead of mm -hmm. time as well. Mm -hmm. I know that there are some uh, 15 buses on the streets this morning. Ayalolo. The Ayalolo, yes. Uh -huh. I'm getting an indication that there are about 15 of those buses that are applying various routes in Accra for our health workers. Mm -hmm. um, and we're looking at hopefully, uh, you know, adopting a similar intervention in Kumasi. In Kumasi. I think the information minister mentioned that mm -hmm. earlier as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, but generally, it, it was it was yeah. it was revealing. Yeah, I, it was I got, revealing. I don't yeah. know why you were concerned about, especially <laughs> the unemployed. Yeah, because we have huge <laughs> unemployment rate in the yeah. country. So I mean, and also forget that lots of people have had to lose their jobs because of the close down of yeah. some microfinance institutions and savings and loans companies. So lots of people are unemployed as we speak. So we should be thinking about because if you're unemployed, you're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You are. You know, anyways. Well, that's what he said. So it depends on how we are. He said we are looking at the lenses <laughs> and the lenses a little more.